I'm Lily Williams, and this is my tutorial weight distribution and quick anatomy for characters. So the first step to creating a character that is believably in their world is to make sure that they have weight. Obviously, there are some characters that might fly or float or even ones that aren't of this world. But for the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to discuss adding proper weight distribution to your human characters. This is a brief introductory lesson where I teach you how to apply this to life drawing and your own styles. The first step to figuring out weight is understanding a skeleton structure. I do a circle for the head, a drop down angle of the jaw, an egg shape with a cutout so you can see the direction the egg is facing for the rib cage, a line for the shoulders so they don't get broken, an angular rectangle for the pelvis, and then lines for the legs and the arms. Immediately as I start drawing another skeleton next to this one, it already be sort of becomes my style. I begin pushing things and drawing things in a more pushed and cartoony way. That is more the way I draw. So it's no longer just a skeleton, it becomes something I see. These symbols for the skeleton are a fast way to get the internal structure of a human down when you pose it. You can see here how the egg shape of the rib cage moves when you draw over different skeleton poses. By making sure you have the rib cage, box of the hips, shoulders, legs, and head in the right position, you can see how the skeleton would be able to maintain anatomical reality even if you transfer these ideas to a cartoon character. Something to note is that the hip box will tilt forward and back, not just side to side. So depending on how the character's hips are positioned, it will not only be emphasized on one side, but it will also be forward or backward. Both of these skeletons are positioned in a way where the top of their hip bone area is tilted forward. So now that you have the basic understanding of what shapes are in a skeleton, we have to add the plumb line. According to Merriam-Webster, the plumb line is a line that is directed to the center of gravity to the earth, a vertical line. No matter where your character is or what they are doing, for them to be balanced, their plumb line must extend directly vertically from their sternum, which I have circled right here, to in between their feet, sometimes the inside ankle. If the plumb line is to either side of both ankles, the character's weight is off. This seems obvious was once pointed out, but when you know this trick, it's easy to remember, and it makes it easier to learn how to push and pull the pose without losing the character's balance. This model is posing in a very dynamic way. Her hips are completely outside her plumb line, and yet when the plumb line hits the floor, it is between her feet. Her pose is also dynamic because of the angle of her shoulders and hips. Most people, unless they are completely balanced upright, will stand with the same side of their body pointed into itself. What I mean by that is her left hip and left shoulder are angled towards each other, while her right hip and right sh shoulder are pointed away from each other. The opposite of this pose is someone who does yoga. You can see that with yoga they are very balanced, they are in an upright position, and their body is not contrasting each other too much. I went online and found a photo of a woman in a very neutral pose. Even though she seems totally neutral, she does have a little tilt to her hips and shoulders. So how do you take this pose, or a pose like this that you might get in a real life drawing class, and make it more dynamic? Learning to push the pose, but maintaining weight and anatomical rules, sometimes goes in stages. So first, I drew a skeletal structure over her, and then I repeated the process by figuring out which side of her body I wanted to squish and which side I wanted to stretch. Then I adjusted her skeletal figure just enough so she is more dynamically posed. Then, next to her, I started drawing my own version of her pose with the twist of her hips and the angles of her shoulders and hips tilted towards each other. Her plumb line goes between her feet even though her ankles are close together. This maintains that because her ankles are close together, she can still stand upright with weight on one hip. So that skeleton is not exactly my style. In order to make it my style, I have to take the concept of that skeleton with the egg for the torso and the box for the hips and the shoulder line and the circle for the head and I have to take all those concepts and then push the proportions so it is more my style. I make a ground for her to stand on and then I take that egg and the box for the hips and I start to play with it. I push the proportions, I make it something more like how I would draw naturally. I have established the proportions that are my style, I can then take it to the next level. Then I lower the opacity and I start drawing another rough on top of it. 
ears, a nose, a mouth, all where they should correctly be in the face. Um, that's like another video, so I'm not going to get into that totally right now. But you do want to make sure that when you drop the jaw down and you add the eyes, they are in certain cartoony places on the face to add an anatomical realness so that you, you might have it in the body, but you don't lose it in the face. Um, there are all sorts of ways to cartoon that are completely different than this. You might have eyes on the top of your head, but for the purpose of this anatomical um, realness to the body, I'm going to keep the head somewhere between reality. One of my biggest drawing pet peeves is when people break the shoulders. So the shoulders, when they're broken, uh, look kind of like that. But the thing is that um, shoulders are attached to your clavicle area. So I draw that line so that the shoulders don't break. So when you're drawing um, your hips and your shoulders and they have that contrasting angle, you don't want to draw one of the shoulders like floating off next to the ear. Um, still attach them to that line so that you aren't going to break. You can still lift your shoulders um, and drop your shoulders, but they're not going to get too far off of that straight line. So this girl I drew initially and did the rough of, she's pretty skinny. I'm going to show you something how you draw a character with a little bit more weight. So you can take the same exact skeletal structure, the same exact posing technique, and you make sure that you add a squash and a stretch. Now what a squash and a stretch are, what I kind of described where the shoulders point in and one side points out, you want to make sure that you're adding those layers of muscle and fat underneath a character. And when you do that, there will be a squash and a pinch on one side, and on the other side there will always be a stretch. For her, you can tell how I did that, where there's the at her, at her waist there's a pinch, and then on the other side there's a stretch. She still has a feminine figure, so there's a little bit of a curve, but that's still a stretch side on the right. Now I'm going to just speed up adding all the details to them and adding the clothes, um, getting clothes to drape and properly go over uh, skin and fabric and all that is a totally different video that I'm not going to get into, but right now I just quickly add the clothes over the structures that I already have. Now these are rough but cleaned up drawings. The plumb line goes down to the ground and their hips and shoulders contrast each other and go in on one side and out on the other. So I'm going to take the girl on the left because I like her a little bit better. I'm going to add a ground line and I'm going to draw her in a more dynamic pose. Starting with the circle for the base of the skull, I'm going to drop the jaw down. I often add an ear to the egg of the chest so it's facing the right angle. Shoulders angled down and the hip box will meet the shoulders on her left side. The spine is the green that is at a curve, the plumb line drops down so it meets between her feet. Um, then I just do the quick lines of her legs and arms. She's not going to be totally on model because I have only ever drawn her this time. And then I rough in uh, a rough version on top of that, trying to get where I would want her hair, her neck to go into where her shoulders are, um, putting in a little bit of a rough version of her face, figuring out where her um, form is on top of that skeleton, getting in the squash and stretch of her back and her middle. And when I draw her legs in here, I kind of figure I actually want that one leg to be back a little bit so it's behind the plumb line so she's really balanced instead of just a little bit balanced. So then I'm going to take this and I'm going to drop the opacity down and I'm going to go in and do a more final rough version on top of this. You know, if I was doing this for final, it would be a lot more cleaned up, but for the purpose of this tutorial, it's just like a rough final. Getting that hand in, the squash and stretch of her arms, squash and stretch of her torso, her skirt, her shirt, and her legs. One side of a body is curved, the other side will be squished. That is just the way it works, um, and whether a character has more weight over it and you have to finesse the squash and stretch, then you can do that. But if there is a pinch, then there's going to be a pull on the other side because anatomically that's what happens to our bodies when we move back and forth. So there's a squash and a stretch. On the girl standing on the left, you can see this with the stretch and then the squash. There's a squash and a stretch on either side of the body. Thank you so much for watching and supporting my tutorials. You can follow me online at LWBEAM.